We have a lot to cover today in terms of the Saints. We're going to be looking at some of the film from the Saints and Bears game, kind of what kind of what happened. And I'm going to kind of let you guys know what some notes I kind of gathered from that game. We also have a little bit of an injury report to go over between the Saints and the Vikings. And then we will dive into uh, the Saints and Bears film. So make sure you guys stay tuned and we're about to dive into that. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Who Dots Pod. I am Caden Janish, your host, and it has been too long since we did one of these. These are always some of my favorites, and today we're going to have a little bit of an upgrade of them. Haven't been able to do them the past two weeks because I was sick. Sick in terms of like actually like actually being sick, and also just sick of the Saints offense. Um, but now now we're back. We're going to be looking at the Saints and Bears, what they did good, what they did bad. Some mostly offense, but we also have a few defensive plays in there as well. So we're going to kind of go into all of that before we dive into anything. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Leave a like if you like what we're doing here and continue to show support. And we'll continue to post videos and content for you all. And if you want to follow me on social media, there should be something on one of these corners with my Instagram and my Twitter. So if you guys want to check that out, there's also links in the description. And all right. Let's talk about some things and some takeaways I had from the Saints and Bears film. I watched it twice. Um, there isn't a lot of notes that I kind of took away, but he, these are just like the biggest ones I had. So I'm a little bit more down on Derek Carr's performance. I, um, I think what we've seen from him in the past few weeks is kind of what we expected. Average offense can make some big plays. He's going to make checkdowns. But the most important thing is he's not going to really turn the ball over too much. And I'm not going to complain when... The Saints don't turn the ball over offensively. Um, there are just some things like he missed a few reads, kind of got the ball out quicker, maybe made the check down the primary read instead of actually going through his progressions. So that's kind of something where I think he needs to improve upon, but he is in year 10 or year 9. I'm not sure which one. So I don't know if that's something he will improve upon or if he just kind of is who he is. It's probably just who he is. But he has the ability to take those shots downfield. It kind of felt like maybe they're playing a more safe offense in terms of uh, they had a lead and maybe they're just trying to be more protective of the football and let the defense do the rest either way. Offense is average. I'm a little bit more down on Derek Carr. I still think the way he's performing the past few weeks has been significantly better than what we saw the first few weeks. And I think the offense is improving at an ugly pace. They're improving, but it just doesn't look pretty. They'll improve somewhere and then not improve it somewhere else. And it's just kind of this one step forward, one step back, two steps forward, two steps back, that kind of thing. Uh, we have a whole breakdown of the Saints offense over the past five weeks compared to the first four weeks. That was the last video we posted, so if you want to check that out, go for it. Um, another note, Jamal Williams, he doesn't get a lot of rushing yards, a lot of receiving yards, but this dude deserved a fucking game ball. This dude blocked his ass off in the running game, passing game. He allowed Derek Carr to throw a touchdown. A touchdown. He allowed, or no, he allowed Taysom Hill to throw a touchdown. He was a huge part of why Derek Carr was able to get the ball out on certain third down situations. Jamal Williams deserves a game ball. He may not have a thousand rushing yards, but dude has had a thousand rushing yards worth of blocks. If that makes sense, like the blocks he are ma is making is critical for this team. So Jamal Williams definitely on the up side, I guess. Uh, the Bears made it, it seemed like they made it a priority to contain and cover Michael Thomas. And when teams do that, that kind of shows who they think the wide receiver one is. I'm not saying Olave or Mike or Rashid is wide receiver one, but the Bears seem to make a huge effort to kind of contain Thomas. And Thomas still, there's times where he was open and Carr just didn't throw it his way. He could have easily had a four reception, 60 yard, one touchdown game. Ended up with a zero stat line. Um, next, I thought Pete Carmichael's use of motion was good. Um, there's still an issue where the routes end up in the same spot. I think his lack of creativity on the running, in terms of running the football, sucks. Aside from the Taysom Hill plays. Maybe he needs to be a little bit... Well, he definitely needs to be better, but I thought his use of motion in terms of like passing has been good. Uh, Brian Brzee's pass breakup at the, near the end of the game was a huge play, and we don't really realize how big of a play it was until you look at that film. Secondary has to be the best in the NFL, from corner to corner to slot to safety to safety to backup. It's elite everywhere. Um, A.T. Perry was super close to having some pretty big plays. There's a play where he slipped we're going to look at. There's a play 
where he was open, Carr was pressured, and he had kind of threw it elsewhere. And there was another play. He could have had a touchdown, but he's like the final read on that play. But we'll we'll look into that. Don't worry. Uh, bootlegs are starting to kill this defense again. Communication on zone coverage allowed guys to be open. That's why so many times the Bears had guys open in yards after the catch. It was such a big issue. And I thought Zach Bond actually pl had a nice few plays in terms of stopping um, – Bajent from running the football. Maybe they should use him in terms of stopping Josh Dobbs this week. Um, Derek Carr's footwork and ability to step up into the pocket needs to be better and not make the check down his primary read. We kind of went over that. And we'll get into this, but the Saints ran an RPO with Derek Carr, not Taysom Hill. And that's the first time that I know of that they ran an RPO. So we're going to look into that. And I believe that is everything we have to. Uh, notes wise takeaways that I have so um, yeah let's just dive into some of the footage okay so the first play we have is the first third down of the game it's their opening series and one the play call was pretty bad why are they going deep to Olave here they have here's Olave we basically had him run all the way out here and on a go route on third down and four then we have Thomas come over the middle and kind of sit and Juwan, I believe, just kind of comes out here and he's kind of open. First down marker is about right here. So Michael Thomas's route is at the sticks. It is able to get a first down. Carr doesn't read it. Looks for Olave. Here's the play. Carr takes a snap. Protection is nice. Right here, he's looking at Olave. He should be looking at Michael Thomas. He's open. That is a first down. You also have Jamal Williams in the flat. And then here's Juwan Johnson. But this should be the read right here. Michael Thomas should be the read. That is a first down. Thomas is catching that almost every day of the week. Instead, Carr throws to Olave. And I know the Saints made a very big effort to get Chris Olave involved. I think it was very important and critical that the Saints get him involved. But take the first down when you can. Take the first down when you can. Here's the rest of the play. Going deep to Olave. Ends up incomplete. Good coverage there by the corner. Forcing Olave court towards the boundary. Using the sideline as another defender. And forces it to be incomplete. And here's the other angle. Throw it to Michael Thomas. Throw it to Michael Thomas. There's no reason why you should not be throwing to Michael Thomas right here. Or Jamal Williams. One of these two guys probably gets you a first down. Pass ends up being incomplete, and the Saints go and punt the football. All right, here's the first defensive play we have for the Saints. The Bears do, this is a nice play design. They're going to pitch it here, I'm pretty sure, and then this guy comes around and gets the ball. Granderson does a good job, typically as a defensive end. If the ball is snapped and no one is blocking you, chances are there is going to be a guard coming at you to block you, or the ball is coming your way. That's typically how it goes. And what would you know? It's a pitch. Then another pitch. Granderson does a good job waiting. He does a very nice job of going outside and then co forcing the runner back inside because you're taught to force the ball carrier inside because if Granderson comes in this way instead of going out and back this way, this dude has all of this room. And Tyron Matthew, and it looks like that's Demario Davis, are the only guys who are there to make that tackle. Maybe that's Paulson Deep. I'm not really too sure. But Granderson does a great job of getting outside, forcing him back in, then making this really big and nice hit. That's an outstanding job from Carl Granderson. He's been definitely the a top two, top three player on this team this season. Here it is. He waits, waits, goes outside, and then forces him back inside and gives him a huge hit. All right, I believe this is... The Paulson Adebo interception. Saints playing a rookie. Oh, no, 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 no. This isn't the Paulson Adebo interception. So a big reason why the Saints had so many issues in terms of uh, allowing guys to get open. They're running a lot of zone coverage. Zone coverage is not what they do very well. Or that's not at least their strength. The man is what they do best. And right here, you're going to see Demario Davis and Elante Taylor have some miscommunication. Demario Davis thinks Alante Taylor is going to come over here and cover the flat. I believe this dude runs a flat route. 
one of these two. Someone runs a flat route. Elante Taylor ends up covering this zone right here, as well as the Mario Davis. So now you have two guys covering one zone. Adebo's kind of back here in this deep third. And then leaving all of this area wide open. So we'll let this play out. As you see right here, Demario Davis points, telling Taylor to cover the flat. Taylor doesn't see it. They miscommunicate. They're both covering the same guy. It actually looks like they're in man coverage here. Adebo's locked up on this guy. Taylor probably should have been here. Or Demario should have been here. One of these two guys messed up. I'm assuming it was Taylor. And then first down, Bears. All right, here's the Paulson Adebo interception. Saints run zone. This guy, Tyran, has deep. May has deep. And if one of these guys runs a seam or streak down the middle, Demario Davis has that responsibility. Adebo has this zone. He plays this perfectly. He's back. If it's thrown here, he can make a tackle. If it's thrown here, he can go make a play. Same thing over here, and everyone else just kind of covers the middle. And Bajan sees openness. Adebo's in the zone, reads it perfectly, and gets the interception. That's basically as perfect and as good as you could probably play that as a corner, aside from maybe getting a pick six. That return was was a little uh, was a little shit, but. It's okay because that was an outstanding play from Paulson to Debo. Bajent had also way too much time to go through his progressions. Saints on offense. This is what I mean by Pete Carmichael's use of motion is really good. It looks like this is Olave. He comes motion and he's going to motion all the way back out. Here's Jamal Williams and Taysom Hill. And they're going to do a Taysom Hill run. But this, this is outstanding motion right here. Taysom gets a snap. Gets bit, what that motion does, it gets this guy to go that way. All of these guys are now focused on this guy. His eyes are also over there. He's reading the quarterback. Same thing as this guy. This guy's coming in right there. So these three, these two, three guys are stalled because of that motion. Taysom Hill hesitates. Jamal Williams, what a block. And Taysom Hill is able to pick up eight yards on the play. This is what I like from Pete Carmichael in terms of motion. The creativity on the Taysom Hill runs are really well and really good. Everything else is a little meh. Really good block from Jamal Williams right there. Ends up getting eight yards. Saints have the football. I believe this is third down. It looks like man coverage. It's not in this clip, but Olave went in motion. This guy followed him. So that typically means it's man. You have all of these guys showing blitz oh whoops i'm you have all of these guys showing blitz and it looks like everyone is man to man with a single high safety typically this is what this shows with single high safety uh if you watch that drew Brees film breakdown uh i'm gonna kind of re-say what he said once he went in motion Derek Carr calls alert alert this guy's running a slant he's running a slant pick your poison this is typically Michael Thomas territory. But once they hike the football, they're in zone. This guy making Michael Thomas a priority. And Chris Olave on the slant. They do a good job. Carr throws it in between the two zones. And Olave does a good job stopping in between the zone, reading the zone, and making the catch and getting the first down. Basically, this play was designed to go to Michael Thomas or Olave once they showed that it was man. Good job by Derek Carr recognizing the zone right when he snapped the football. As you see here, this looks like a blitz. Single high, they don't. Quick release, really nice play there from Derek Carr and Chris Olave. All right, third down and goal. You're going to have Shahi kind of go here, Moro kind of go there, and Olave runs this hitch. But what I like about this route is he cuts outside to get away from the defender. And the ball is placed right here away from the defender. Good job from Carr. This is man coverage, as you can. This is basically the same coverage as the last play. This guy's right here, right here, right there, right there. Single high. He's going to cover basically whoever 
it's over the middle or whoever he feels or is told to cover alvin Kamara, outstanding job of pass protection all of these guys are blitzing he does a good job of coming up and blocking giving Derek carter that extra half a second half second to make the throw to chris olave on this route and you'll see if you know what i meant about michael thomas taking the attention basically from the bears defense this guy comes over here and helps bracket michael thomas who's kind of running an in breaking route this guy covers the outside this guy has the middle of the field here's the play snap good block from camara as you see here's the double team over the middle olave's curl really good and then Carr puts it outside olave breaks outside really good execution right there against a pretty tough defense in terms of the blitz and then they get their little dance on here's the other angle just appreciate alvin Kamara's blitz pickup right here boom really nice throw really nice catch all right bootleg right here Boop. saints sucked against bootlegs a few years ago they kind of got it fixed and now they're starting to suck again he's coming all the way out here this guy's going to drop back. Mooney's going to be wide open. Have all of these guys kind of going downfield. Wide open. Wide open. Yeah, there's a few plays in here like this. Showing that the Saints against bootlegs are starting to struggle again a little bit. And then three guys miss the fucking tackle, which is unacceptable. And it's not like three bums. Like... I'm pretty sure it's Demario Davis, Marshawn Lattimore, and Tyron Matthew. Here's the other angle of it. And why don't we pause it right here? This play ended up getting like 30 more yards. Wow. Whoop. Looks like my high school football team's tackling skills right there. All right, Bears back with the football. They're still with the football. Another bootleg. Demario Davis coming in. I'm not sure if he's supposed to do that or if he's supposed to cover back. But now these guys are all going to be open or have mismatches and have the ability to be open. Adebo does a very nice job. He was supposed to be covering this guy. It looks like Bond or Warner got beat. So he ended up picking up this right here. And that's good because now well, it's better to have this guy open than to have that guy open because now you only have two guys to beat for a touchdown. Bajant finds him and then still makes a really nice play. They have to figure out how to stop that or else it's just going to kill them the rest of the season. Here's the other angle of it. Play action bootleg. Demario comes in wide open. Miss some miscommunication right there between Bond or Demario or someone missed their assignment and it wasn't pretty this is the col the second cole commit touchdown you have dj moore kind of just running or whatever they sell the run very good and all these guys right here bite on it so all three of these guys on the pass are now out of the play here's cole commit he's gonna block zach bond for a few seconds sell the sell the run and then leak out and be wide open for the touchdown there are just is a lack of discipline on this play there's a, this one route takes tyron basically towards him because there's no one else really going that way here's commit selling the run here's warner demario and Lattimore all falling for the run and now this guy is going to basically bully bond out here and run his route to the end zone see right there wide open touchdown wow this is a really nice play design by the bears i'm not gonna lie really nice play design they sell this run very well they even have this pulling guard to sell the run right here uh this guy he's pulling that's gonna help sell the run a lot more too really nice play action as well from bajan and finally learned how to say his name right. And then throws a touchdown. Wow. Juwan goes in motion. Saints have the football. Play action bootleg. So you have Lynn Bowden coming across. Foster Morales running across. And here's A.T. Perry running a corner. 
I don't know where he is in terms of the progressions or reads. I don't know if Derek Carr is ever going to throw to him. But at one point during the play, the corner is coming up, and then he comes down to cover Moreau, leaving him open basically with the safety at a bad angle. But he slips and kind of knocks himself out of the play. Let's play it. Everything's covered aside from, I guess, Lynn Bowden. This is covered. This is covered. Corner comes down. And if A.T. Perry gets his, keeps his footing, this might be a huge play. Instead, he slips. Not blaming him on that. Morrell and Carr have some chemistry. He knows if he keeps running, this isn't going to be open. So he stops and kind of just cuts back a little bit. And Carr does a nice job finding him downfield for the first down. And then A.T. Perry, nice job getting back up. And I don't think the block really did anything. But I think the effort there is what really matters in terms of just getting up and going up to make that block for his teammate. That matters. So play action. Here's the other angle of it right here. Morrow, nice job. Stops. The chemistry with Carr really comes in handy right there. And then you get a nice, nice play right there. Third down, I believe this is 10. They pick up 12 yards here. One, I love this formation from Pete Carmichael. You got Alvin Kamara, Chris Olave, Michael Thomas. You have Olave run a crossing route. Thomas run like a in breaking route around here. And Kamara has an option route. This is man coverage all the way, single high safety. Kamara has the option. He's going to kind of come around, stop, and depending on coverage, he can go out. He can cut in, run a curl. And what Kamara does is he comes around, stops, stutters a little bit, and then cuts inside. This is really, really nice play call. Or in term this is a really nice play. Now he needs to, Carr needs to throw this a little bit sooner, and Kamara may get some extra yardage. One thing I don't like about this play, everyone is running to this side of the field. I would very much like to see this tight end possibly just run a crossing route. I know Kamara has the option to run out as well, but like this is too close to each other. And this ends up being too close to each other because now this guy has an opportunity to make a tackle on Kamara. That's my only, um, I guess, downside to the play. But nice execution. Here's the other angle of it. And let's give some props to Jamal Williams again. Deserves a game ball for his fucking pass protection. Boom. Oh, why don't we go back a little bit? Jamal Williams, these guys are blitzing. He's going to come in here, stutter, loop around. 53 is going to come in and crash Eric McCoy, leaving this guy wide open. Jamal Williams is expecting to block. This guy, when things get mixed up, he still makes a really nice block on number 91. Gives Carr extra time to make this pass. Huge props to Jamal Williams this game on just executing pass protection and run blocking. Carr needs to throw it a little bit sooner but finds AK for a nice play. Another nice play design from Pete Carmichael here. I know a lot of people may not agree with me, but this is a nice play. Taysom Hill run, you're just going to get all these guys out here blocking. What I do like about this play compared to other ones Here's Jamal Williams. He's running out this way. So now, some of these guys are delayed a little bit because they see this guy running that way. So one of these guys has to go. That's taken one guy out of the play. And now you have one, two. This guy's going to block here. You got Ramchick out here. You get Ruiz and McCoy is going to come up here. So basically, everyone has a one-on-one -on -one block as opposed to it being two blockers, three defenders. One, two, three. Ruiz needs to make that block. This guy makes a really nice effort to make basically a touchdown saving tackle right here. Morrell's got to get that block. This is also a really nice effort uh, from this dude to make this ankle tackle on Taysom. He also saves a touchdown. Really nice play design. I know some people may not agree, and that's fine. But Jamal Williams running out this way. Has all of those guys right there stutter a little bit, giving Taysom Hill maybe a few extra yards in terms of uh, those linebackers weren't there to help make a play. Right here, third down. 
Bears showing blitz single high safety again. Man coverage. Here's the single high safety. Here is the wide open middle of the field. Michael Thomas runs the nastiest route I've ever seen right here. Runs an out route. You got Rashid running like a four verts seam. You get Juwan Johnson runs a nice route. And I honestly don't know what the fuck Olave is doing on this play. <laughs> I actually don't know what his route is because that's kind of how confusing it is. And again, Jamal Williams. Props to him. Pass protection. Takes a snap. Boom. Yeah, he gets clocked, but guess what? He did his job. He gave Carr extra second, second and a half. Right here, John Johnson, nasty route, wide open, Shahid right there. Thomas, this this is hilarious. Here's the rest of the play. Finds Juwan, really nice read. Thomas a little frustrated that he should have gotten the ball, but I'm sure he was fine that the team ended up getting a first down. I don't know if he scores on that play, but it was a really nasty route. Really nice block from Jamal there. Okay. Here we go. Here's the second touchdown pass from card. Get Olave here. Get Thomas right there. This guy's going to cover the flat. So he's going to cover both this area and that area. Safety's going to come over. This guy's going to drop back. All these guys. This guy has the flat as well. He's going to cover the corner. You get Taysom Hill running this in the flat. And you get Juwan going like that. Perfect coverage to stop it. The Saints just execute it very well. There's, yeah, there's nothing at the top here. Again, I don't know if this is part of their game plan. Very big effort to cover Michael Thomas. This isn't really there. And if it is, this guy's going to come down and give him a little pop. Taysom's here. Really nice play. Good execution. And it ends up being a touchdown. Here's the other angle of it. Nice read from Carr. Nice protection. It ends up being a touchdown. Bears back on offense. They send Mooney in motion. No one follows him. Showing zone. Ends up being a read option. This is a really good drive from the tackle. Basically forcing Cam inside. All of the space is available for whoever's running the football. Watch Zach Bond here. Makes a really nice play. He shoots the gap. And pursues Bajent around this area. And makes a really nice play. And prevents it from being uh, a bigger play as well. Maybe not a super big play. But it ends up being a gain of 3 yards instead of maybe like 7 yards. Giving him a better second down situation. Here's the other angle of it. Here's a Zach Bond. They send a guy in motion. Zone. Not main coverage. Bond comes in down. Makes a really nice tackle. Bears motion, eye formation, bootleg. Got all of these guys stopping because of the bootleg. Now the Saints do a better job here of coverage on the bootleg. But Cam Jordan doesn't do a very good job of keeping contain. And with all of these guys in main coverage locked down, none of these guys are looking at the quarterback. So Bajan's able to run free and get a quite a bit of yardage. Gets to about midfield. Wow. Yikes. Look, it look and before I continue, I am no expert. I'm not the biggest nerd. I know basics. I'm not I'm just a fan who knows basic fundamentals about football. Nothing really analytical just basic fundamental football and a fan who just wants to talk about film i'm not trying to criticize anyone i'm not trying to give anyone shit because i cannot do what these guys do every day and every week really nice use of motion here olave gets into the backfield car here's kendra so why don't we just let this play go for a second This is the first play of the drive. Throw it to Michael Thomas. Throw it with anticipation. Throw it right here. Thomas is willing to take the hit from this safety or this guy. Thomas is open here. This play ends up being a run. Car like runs out of bounds right here. He needs to throw the f 
freaking football to Thomas. This is open right here. This is open for in the NFL. That is open. Carr, I guess, never sees it. He does. I would not want him to throw the football right here. Yes, this guy looks like he's wide open for a touchdown. This guy's chasing him down. If he gets ready to throw this football, that ends up being a fumble. And ends up running for a few yards. Here's the other angle of it. But Thomas is open here. Carr has to pull the trigger here. He just absolutely has to. It's open. And he sees him way too late. Ends up just being a QB run. All right. We get two over here. One over here. Two by two. One running back. Let's see what happens. Carr takes the snap. Feels a little bit of pressure. Now this one isn't on Carr. Pressure got to him. He was forced to kind of throw it here. But if he has a little bit more time, look who's open. First down right here. That's 30 yards. If this is a go route, this is a touchdown. Ends up being incomplete. Bears thought it was a fumble. So let's see what happened to the front up here. Saints block five. Bears rush four. Sweat gets pressure off the edge. These guys, Pete and Hurst, seem like they got mixed up as well. This guy coming off the edge against Ramchak. And it, maybe it's just bad overall from everyone. Maybe it was a bad throw as well. Carr definitely didn't have enough time to make that read, however, to Thomas or Olave. In my opinion, maybe you have a different one. Here goes Shahid in motion. Here's Kendra. I really love this play. Shahid goes in motion. I'm not sure. I can't remember which way he motions, but he motions. They do a fake little screen to Shahid. And then it looks like they run a screen out to Kendra Miller. And it ends up being a huge play. The very minimal touches and flashes we've seen from Kendra Miller, he looks really good. Now there's two issues, however. One, he can't stay healthy and be on the field. And two, he's not being used enough. He had a really good game against the Patriots. He actually had, I believe, 90 yards. It didn't feel like it, but he had 90 yards. This is a really nice play here. They need to do a better job of just getting him more involved on runs that just aren't up the middle. Maybe it's more screen passes, option routes, whatever it is. Get him involved when he's playing alright here's another play man Carr needs to step up into the pocket here he feels the pressure right here but he can definitely step up a little bit into the pocket right here and he has this guy possibly open I'm not sure what Olave is running if he's running like an in-breaking route that's open can maybe hit Thomas here he's going to take a shot from the safety but he needs to step up into the pocket and make one of these throws. I'm not going to be upset that you take a check down protecting the football. I get it. But make one of these throws. Step up into the pocket and make one of these three throws. Throws it to Camaro. Hits the ground. Pass ends up incomplete. Definitely should have hit Thomas, Moro, or Olave there. It was there. He needs to step up into the pocket. Here's a better angle. I know he feels that pressure. Just step up right here. And if you still feel a little bit more pressure, just dump it off or throw it away. Pass ends up incomplete. All right, here we go again. Feels some pressure right here from the interior Ruiz. And it looks like McCoy both get beat. Ends up having to dump it off right here. But if he had more time, Looks like Taysom would have been open. Here's the single high safety. Looks like he was going towards Taysom. And it looks like this guy might have been open for a huge play too if he had a little bit more time. But here's Taysom. Nice little dump off to Juwan. Not much. This is a really nice player from Elante Taylor. They're going to run a screen. Just kind of throw it out there. They did, both a Taylor and Adil will do an outstanding job when this guy comes up of not letting their eyes fool them. Sometimes they'll run a fake screen, this guy fake blocks, and then ends up running 
um, just down the sideline. They do a very nice job of not falling for it. And when it's thrown, they both do a very nice job of just colliding down and making the tackle on the third down and 10, third down and nine. Very nice job. Uh, here's the other angle of it. I know we're a little bit high on time, so we're gonna try and hurry up a little bit more. Here's the RPO that we got from the Saints right here. This is a really nice play. So before all of this, whatever, Derek Carr made an audible. Camara was right here, came right here, then we put him right there. Get a bubble. You get Sh Shahid's gonna run like a little hitch. And basically, Derek Carr's reading this guy. If he comes down, you throw it. If he stays right there, you hand it off. Really nice play. Works very well. Picks up a nice first down to get 12 yards. Okay, we're back. Sorry, we had some te technical difficulties. But as I was saying, here's the other angle of it. He's reading this guy. Shahid's going to come in and sit right here. If this guy sits, you hand it off to Kamara. If he comes down, you throw it. Really nice job from Derek Carr. Really nice read. Here it is. If he sits, look at this huge ass hole for Kamara to run through. There's also a gap here. Shahid's open though. Really nice play design. Really nice read. Execution was very well. Now, take some time. Get Jamal. These guys crack down. Get this guy coming up. This guy coming out. Get McCoy coming up. Get Ramchek coming up. And basically, everyone has a blocker. If Taysom Hill hands this ball off to Jamal Williams, one of these guys is making the tackle. Everyone is blocking. And then the one person who makes the tackle is this guy. And he runs all the way around to make the tackle. So here's the play. Jamal Williams, really good blocking. Boom, 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 boom. If this guy, if Montez Sweat doesn't chase him 50 fucking yards around playing like ring around the rosy this is a touchdown because this guy's in here Taysom reads his block cuts inside it's a touchdown also props to watch Ramchuk and McCoy getting to the second level making their blocks McCoy's blocking the free safety really really good job on that play just keep doing that play I could give two shits if you run the same play over and over all right you get a lave in motion this is a really nice job a big issue why the Saints running game has been struggling is they get off of one block and then fail to get to the second level. Ruiz and Ramchek hit this double team right here. Ruiz gets off of it, gets to the second level, blocks this linebacker, gives Kamara a nice gap to navigate through here. And then the rest is Alvin Kamara being Alvin Kamara using his balance and his strength to just continue to get seven, eight extra yards. And man, it was quite the sight to see that was fucking awesome here's the other angle of it watch ruiz and Ramchek. they're going to double team this guy then ruiz is going to get to the second level and block it looks like 57 boom boom yep camara cuts through nice ball carry vision and watch thomas try to tackle the defender off of alvin camara all right yeah here's the Taysom hill touchdown <laughs> you get bink right here running the flat A.T. Perry might have had a touchdown right here, but he's the last read. Foster Moreau is the second read. I believe he's right here. He's going to block and then kind of come right here. And then Juwan's going to leak around back here. The Bears double team the defensive tackle. He draws that much attention. Foster Moreau, Taysom even said, is the second read. He gets double teamed. Juwan Johnson's wide open. A.T. Perry looks like he could have had a touchdown as well. Also, watch Jamal Williams Get this block on the edge right here. Jamal Williams. He he didn't do really too much as a ball carrier or receiver, but man, he made the plays he made the plays that helped make the biggest plays of the game. He had a big impact on those plays. There's the play. Touchdown, Juwan Johnson. Wow. Nice play. I don't know if we're ever gonna see Saunders catch a touchdown now. Nice block. Juan wide open. Looks like one of those two guys is supposed to cover him. Saints look to be in man coverage. They use motion. It looks like they're in man coverage. May follows him. Looks like single high safety right there. These guys are rushing. One of these guys is covering the running back. 
Lonte Taylor, nice job just crashing down immediately, believing what his eyes tell him. It makes a really huge play. Almost, it looked like it could have been possibly a fumble, ends up being incomplete. Just like the last defensive play we saw, he waited till the ball was out of his hands, comes down, and makes a really nice play. I believe this is the second pulse. No, Marcus May interception right here. They did a nice job in the second half of taking away Bajant's first and second reads. Here's read number one, Cam Jordan in coverage. Looks like this is read number two. Here's read number three over the middle. May sees it all the way. Does a nice job coming in and getting making a really big play in the game and getting a huge interception. That is an outstanding play. Here's the other angle of it. We're going to try and hurry up a little bit. We are um, a little bit over the time that we typically like to be at, but that's okay. Again, nice usage. Olave goes in motion. Jamal's going to come in and block. Now, this play doesn't work as well, and we're going to look. Uh, we're going to tell you guys why. Jamal makes a block. That stuff takes him, bounces it outside. It only ends up getting maybe like four or five yards, which is still very effective. But here's why that play didn't work as well as some of the other plays that get like eight to 12 yards. Goes in motion. These guys are watching that. James Hurst, the footing is bad. His body is like this. He's supposed to get to double team and then get to the second level. His body or his angle is bad. He, he's at this. He needs to be kind of... No, that's almost the exact same. He needs to kind of be at a better angle. So now the guy Hurst was probably supposed to block Jamal's blocking. And now this guy who Jamal was originally supposed to block, Hurst is supposed to block right here. Doesn't get off the double team good enough. The linebacker has an open shot to come in because of the angle Hurst is at as opposed to it being more flat diagonal. And then he bounces it outside. Ends up still getting a nice chunk of yardage, but there was definitely some miscues right there from Hurst. All right, Saints. Carr takes a snap. Jamal Williams, big block right there, giving Carr some extra time. Carr's looking at Thomas at this the whole way. But if he looks right here, he has Shahid for a touchdown. Maybe Olave too. I couldn't tell. Why don't we? Why is it not working? All right, let's see Olave. Yeah, Olave's open. Shahid's open. He locks in on Michael Thomas on this play. Ends up being incomplete. Now, something I don't like about this play, watch Shahid after the play. He's like, oh, look how open I am. There's no one around me. The quarterbacks are throwing it to me. No, you can't be doing that. And then, no, it's not just me. Other people who cover the team have said that that needs to be better. Look at him. He's like, oh, I am so open. I get it's frustrating, but you can't be doing that. Um... At least in my opinion. I know a lot of people will have the same opinion. Here's the other angle. Um, all right. Here's the Pulse and Debo second interception. They do. He does a nice job making contact. Contact. Puts his hand on the hip. And just under breaks the route. Everything else is basically covered. It looks like this guy maybe is open. But Bajan doesn't see it. Tries to attack the middle of the field. Props to Demario Davis. I think he's running downfield with the wide receiver, which is absurd. Adebo gets the pick. Just an outstanding overall play from Adebo, who's playing out of his freaking mind right now. He's playing on like another level. He's on a hot streak right now. Here's the other angle. Boop. Nice pick from Paul Um Car. I, I'm not sure which down this is, but. Locks in on Michael Thomas. This is third down, actually. Locks in on Thomas. He has a little bit of extra time. And if, he's, has, if he holds on to it a little bit more, I don't know if the safety stays here or not, but Olavi maybe has a touchdown. He can maybe take a shot right here as well. Pass ends up being kind of out of bounds and complete. He has to make this throw to Thomas. This is a really bad throw. Way too short, way too out wide. They need to figure it out. One week, it seems like they're on the perfect chemistry and connection. And on other weeks, it's like they've never played together. Yeah, got to make that throw, man. All right. I believe this is the Mario Davis's 
strip sack fumble. The Saints run this play a lot, and it's worked a lot in the past. Why don't we rewind it for a second? What you're going to get here to Mario Davis is going to come in. All these guys are going to rush. Warner's going to drop back. To Mario Davis can come in, kind of crash, and then Cam Jordan's going to come in and kind of take him away. They're going to stunt. This guy's supposed to pick up Cam. This guy's supposed to pick up DeMario. It just doesn't happen. And DeMario Davis gets the game winning slash ceiling strip sack fumble. Nothing really open downfield. And Saints call a game. Here's the other angle of it. He's going to crash down. Granderson, my bad, not Jordan, is going to stun across, take away that guy, and boom, game over. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you guys hit that subscribe and like button. We do, we try to do these every week. Just depends on if I'm sick or whatever. But um, make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button so we can continue to do these. And I'll see you guys tomorrow, and we'll be talking about the Saints and Vikings matchup. Mm -hmm.